Um, thank you for that nice introduction. And so cool that so many people are here stayed for React Myths and Legends. So a little bit more about myself. I have been a developer for almost 20 years now. I remember all those good old days that Kent showed us uh, at his very first talk. I uh, worked at uh, Atlassian for almost five years. I worked on a product that probably some people know and probably love, uh, that is called Jira. <laughs> no need to laugh, come on, good product. <laughs> um, after five years of Atlassian, uh, I got a little bit tired from the scale of Jira, so I completely changed my life and joined a really tiny startup. Uh, and that's where I've been hanging out for the last two years. Also, uh, I ca kind of live in Australia, but um, uh, I, li I lived there until very recently, but uh, now I am relocating to Austria for the only reason that Austria is easier to spell. <laughs> Um, so, as um, was mentioned, I write my, uh, a blog where I am doing a lot of um, uh, deep dives and uh, how-tos and um, other uh, tutorials for React developers and front-end developers in general. And uh, uh, I am kind of a nerd, so uh, I love... <laughs> Yay! <laughs> my people here! <laughs> So, as a proper nerd, my hobby is investigating things in React. And one of the recent topics of my investigations is uh, React performance. So, React performance is a funny topic. Technically, we have all those new things like uh, lazy loading and prefetching and all that, that stuff. But uh, none of those things will help you if uh, you write a really big application and the entire thing re-renders on every single click. So when it comes to React performance, the most important thing is actually the core and basics. Uh, knowing and controlling when a component mounts and re-renders, and also uh, prevent as much as possible unnecessary re-renders and remounts. So this is what this talk is about. Uh, it's about various misconceptions and really big myths that surround the topic of React performance and especially uh, re-renders. And I'm going to do this. Please clap. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, but before discussing the myths, uh, let's remember the very basics. What exactly is uh, mounting and re-rendering? When it comes to uh, React lifecycle, those are the two things that we need to care about the most. So mounting is when your component first appears on the screen. React creates it, initializes everything, runs everything for the first time, and then renders it on the screen. Re-render is uh, an update, update of a component that already has been mounted. Uh, Re-render usually is much, much faster than mounting because component already exists, React, React needs just to update some data in there. Re-renders are usually happening as a result of either user interacting uh, with your app or um, uh, some data from, from external, external system comes through and you need to update your app with this data. And in a typical... Uh, a React application, a typical React application would look like this. So it's just a tree of components, and somewhere at the very bottom, you might find something like an um, input field where a user would type, uh, type something. So what you would, do, one would want to do in this case is uh, to detect when user types and then update this component and follow the user. This is where you want to re-render this component. But the last thing usually you want to do is when a user types on every keystroke to re-render the entire page. This is the definition of unnecessary re-renders. And those can be brutal for performance of our apps. In a really big application, it can literally be something like this. And no user will say thank you if it takes you a minute to open just a, a, a second, just to open a normal model dialog. Um, so, um, 
uh, when it comes to re-renders, uh, there is a very big uh, myth that everyone believes. And this one is the big, uh, the big, big, big myth of re-renders. It, it looks like this. A component re-renders when its props change. It's actually amazing because everyone believes it, no one questions it, um, everyone uses it, but it's literally just not true. <laughs> Um, it, 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 yeah, it's not true. And why exactly is that is I want to show you today. Uh, let's take a look at this code. It's the very simple uh, React component. It has some state and it renders some child components. So what will happen here if we update state? Uh, state uh, update is one of the only re is one of the reasons and the only reason for initial uh, re-renders. So a state is updated, and then uh, this component tries to update itself as a result of this state update, and uh, that means it will re-render itself. State is the ultimate source of everything. Without state, we would have completely static up. So this is the state, and that's why it's in a crowd, in a crown. After component updates itself because of the state update, now React needs to propagate those changes that may or may not occur because of the state update to other components. And uh, it does it um, recursively through all, of the through all the children of this component. It never goes up, but it grabs a child of, a child of a component where state uh, change originated, re-renders the child, then it re-renders children of this child, and so on and so forth. So everything here on the screen will re-render. If we want to visualize it with something cute, then um, state update triggers re-render of the parent component. Uh, this one triggers re-render of all of its children. Every single child will trigger re-render of all of the children, and so on and so forth, until the entire app re-renders. And that is one of the major reasons why our apps become slow when uh, you interact with them. So what will happen here if I add some props to this child component? Nothing actually will happen and nothing changes because React will not care about those props when um, re-renders is originated from state. It will re-render parent, it will re-render all of the children. Exactly the same thing will be if um, state update was inside the child component with, uh, with those props. State update happens, React will not check whether props of this child component uh, changed, it will just re-render the child component. Um, as a result of all of this, and as a result of the thinking that uh, props change um, cause components re-render, there is another myth that is originated from this really big myth. And this one is, we should memoize callbacks and um, objects and arrays uh, as props to prevent re-renders of components. Which is, uh, again, not exactly true. Because if we look at this code, um, we will see, um, yeah, we will see, um, we have a prop, but again, if parent component re-renders, child will re-render. But because of this myth, what we can see in actual production apps uh, everywhere is something like this. Someone will memoize on change with use callback because they believe that um, this memoization will prevent child component from re-render. Someone will add them, then some more props, they also memoized, and then more and more and more until our really nice business logic is just buried under this um, uh, really unreadable, uncomprehensible mess of use memos and use callbacks everywhere. Um, but where exactly this myth originated, originated from and when uh, exactly do we need to memoize those props? And the answer here is simple. We forgot a really important step when we think about memoization. And this one is, we also need to memoize um, actual component. Uh, with the tool, uh, most, uh, most of the time, with the tool that React gives us, which is called react.memo. Uh, um, we use it um, like this. So um, we wrap our child component with react.memo, and we render it as any other component. Now, the, uh, that is the only time when React reaches this child component from this chain of re-renders, 
Now it will stop. It will see that a child memo is memoized, and it will start checking props. And if props actually changed, then it will re-render it. If the props haven't changed, it will stop. And this is the only way to prevent this chain of uh, re-renders from happening. Finally, finally, memoization here actually matters. Because if we just leave this on change callback uh, not memoized, what will happen here is if parent component re-renders, React will reach child memo, and it will see that uh, on change uh, prop changed because with every re-render of the parent component, we recreate the function on change. And functions, um, so React uses a referential equality to compare props, and functions will be always different on every re-render if we leave it like that. So uh, whether we have um, React.memo for this child component or not, without memoization of those props. Uh, now will be now will not matter because child memo now will be re-rendering all the time. And <clears throat> now, um, so the only way again to prevent it is um, to memoize every single prop on a component that is also memoized. Now, if when everything is memoized, uh, then um, now, that is the only case when React will stop re-renders uh, from, uh, will stop a, a chain of re-renders, and now your app will be safe from them. So instead of uh, this statement, which is not true, if we really want to make a statement about re-renders and props change, it should be not as nice, but it should be something like this. If a component is wrapped in react.memo and all of its non-primitive props are memoized and none of the props change and parent component re-renders itself, then a component will not re-render itself. Every other case is not like that. Uh, I, um, the topic of re-renders and when we should memoize or not should memoize um, things is uh, much more complicated than this. So I have a really big guide on re-rendered patterns for people who are interested. <clears throat> uh, and um, time to jump to another myth. So this one is um, also really interesting because if you start Googling uh, context and performance, or even just React context, you will see a lot of uh, articles that claim that React uh, context is really bad for, for performance. Context causes re-renders all the time. Sometimes I have a feeling... <laughs> uh, sometimes I have a feeling that um, people think of a context as this um, scary monster that causes a spontaneous um, and uh, random re-renders throughout the app. Which is, uh, of course, not exactly how it works. Uh, how it works is um, something like this. Um, we have a tree of components. We have some data changes at the very top, and we want to pass this data somewhere to the components at the very bottom. If we don't use um, any context or context-like tools, like any state management library, on, uh, the only way to do it is to pass this data through props through every single layer of those components. And then from a re-render's perspective, it will be, again, this. Uh, we will uh, re-render everything until the data actually reaches where it needs to be. But none of those components that uh, were re-rendered right now, none of them actually need this data. And this is where uh, tools like context give us a loophole. We, instead of uh, just uh, managing state at the very top and passing it down, we can extract the state uh, outside of our usual React tree and then just bypass all these uh, layers of components and pass this data directly to the component where the data is actually needed. So um, if we do this, then from a re-render's perspective, we will have this situation. Uh, this uh, thing re-renders itself, and then uh, only component that actually uses context re-renders itself. Everything in between stays, um, stays free of re-renders. Um, so in a, in a way, context actually can be a really good tool for you to 
uh, to speed up your app and to prevent all the unnecessary re-renders. Um, if we want to implement it in uh, something like, um, like an actual app rather than uh, kittens, um, we, can, we can think of it as, um, for example, something like this. We can implement a page uh, with the standard layout of navigation on the left and then main area on the right. And we want to make our navigation uh, expandable and or collapsible with the button here. And then, base, based on this state, we want to render a different number of items somewhere at the very bottom. Maybe it's a number of um, advertisement banners, and we want to show two of them if navigation is open, or three of them if navigation is closed. So, again, if we just implement this with the traditional prop training approach, the code would look something like this. Our page component will have a state, and it will pass a state value to the navigation. Navigation will pass it to the actual button. And then it would have to pass it also to the page component, and then through all of the chain of those components until it reaches the component that renders the actual, button, uh, actual items. And again, from a re-renders perspective, all the thing re-renders all the time when you expand or collapse navigation. And you can imagine how slow this can be for a really complicated app. Uh, with context, instead, we can do something like this. Uh, we can extract this uh, state logic in, into a component. Only the state logic and um, state data and expand and collapse behavior. Um, so state is still there. We extract this as an API of this component. And then we pass this a value to a context provider. Or if you use any state management library, to whatever state management library gives you. Then uh, from our page component, um, this would look something like this. First of all, it becomes much, much simpler. No props anywhere anymore. Uh, we have just a provider that controls the state of navigation, and that's it here. Then uh, we have our expand collapse button somewhere in navigation that uses uh, this context value um, directly. Uh, yeah, context value directly and extracts the toggle API from it and then attaches this to a button. So you click a button, navigation opens and closes. And then somewhere in the main content area, we will have our blocks of items. Uh, blocks of items will also use the uh, context directly, no props again, as you can see. And this one will use now only the state. And then, based on the state, it will render either two or three or how many items we would want. Um, so this is um, a really, really nice concept. But this still doesn't answer the question where exactly this myth of context and it, uh, the, the fact that it causes re-renders everywhere originated from. And the truth here is that um, although it's still a myth, the myth uh, has its reasons. And the problem here is when we use an actual context, not any state management library, is, libraries, is that when context value changes, every single component that uses this context will re-render itself. Uh, so in our case, we have um, the only context with the value where we pass the state of navigation and the API to open it. And uh, one of the components uses uh, just API, one of the components just uses data. But uh, when state of the navigation changes, our value will change. The th uh, very first uh, component with context provider will re-render itself, and then all of them will re-render itself. And uh, un unfortunately, React doesn't give us any nice tools to prevent uh, of this from happening, because uh, technically speaking, re-rendering a uh, component that uses only a toggle API is not necessary when the data changes. You cannot prevent it with memoization. You cannot prevent it with anything. There are various workarounds uh, and uh, hacks uh, to achieve uh, the, uh, this effect. So for example, you can split your context provider, or you can implement a higher order component that does something like a select uh, functionality for you. But if you reach the stage where this uh, approach with context actually causes problems, maybe 
it would be the time to look into any other state management libraries. Uh, but still using, still knowing how context works and knowing this pattern and why it, prevent, it prevents re-renders is still very useful. And if you have just one app with, without any state management, introducing state management library to this just one app it feels a little bit unnecessary. So still something that is good to know. Um, uh, again, uh, the, there is an article in my blog that describes all of this and gives uh, those solutions if you want to try out um, performance optimizations with context. Uh, don't hesitate to check it out. And um, another really big legend is even not even a myth uh, when it comes to React performance is um, the legend of the key. How I tell, how I <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, when we hear key uh, or key prop or key attribute in React, this is usually associated with the lists. So when you need to render a list of um, the same items from uh, just an array, uh, you will um, know that key is involved somehow. So if we look at the code, yeah, uh, yet again, we have an array, and this array um, just renders a bunch of divs. Uh, anyone who ever wrote code like that will know that um, YesLint will now complain at me with something like missing key prop is missing um, for this element. Uh, YesLint wants us to add key somewhere to those divs. But it doesn't actually give us any instructions on what exactly to put there. So if you ask people what exactly should be in this key, the answer is usually, I don't know. Um, the, <laughs> the only constant knowledge about this key is key should be unique. Well, probably because YesLint also tells you that. Uh, if you press further, sometimes people will say that um, key helps React prevent re-renders. And this is actually also not exactly true. Oops, sorry. Um, uh, key is there not to prevent re-renders, but to help React to identify components. So how exactly it does it? Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> uh, on top of whether a key is um, used, uh, whether a key is used to prevent re-renders, there is also really big disagreement. What exactly is a good practice for? Uh, for those keys. So sometimes people will implement it like this. They will have an index of array, which is guaranteed to be unique, and they put it in this uh, key value. Some people will just almost yell at you and say, this is an anti-pattern, should never use it, should use a, uh, instead a value that is coming from the actual value that you're trying to render. Sometimes people just uh, take this uh, idea of the key should be unique, very literally, and <laughs> implement something like this. I, I, I actually saw it in the actual code. Um, that's one way to do it. <laughs> um, but when I started investigating all of this, my face looked probably something like that. <laughs> uh, it's very, very confusing. There are no like, standard guidelines. And um, there is no shared understanding what exactly this key is for and how exactly it helps React to prevent anything. So let's take a look at what key does. We have our normal component, and then we're rendering a list of components, and we're providing key values for those components. Uh, now, what we're rendering here is uh, an array. And um, React needs a way to identify items in this array in order to understand whether this item is exactly the same as it was before, or it's, it's a completely new item. And this is uh, something that key helps uh, React to do that. Um, without um, any additional help, uh, the only way for React to identify an item in array is just um, by its index. And this is what it does uh, at the background. But um, what exactly is happening here during the re-renders? So re-renders of this thing happens. <clears throat> how key helps us here. So
So if we look at the code, um, if parent component re-renders, as we already know, everything will re-render itself. So there is no uh, reason here why uh, those uh, items, why those divs will not re-render themselves as well. And key here plays absolutely no role. What it helps is um, for React to identify which of those items needs to be get rid of. So for example, if we get rid of uh, one of the key on one of the item and replace it with another one during this re-render phase, React will see that this, uh, this component with the key set to one have been eliminated and the new component with the key set to six now appears. It doesn't really matter whether the, the value is exactly the same or even if it's um, either nothing changes. Uh, so React will just see that it needs to get rid of the component with the key that disappeared and reintroduce another component with the new key. So from a re-render's perspective, those two components that are two and three are still re-rendering. This one will remount itself. And again, remounting is really, really slow compared to just a simple re-render. So if this code <laughs> I still love it. Uh, if this code actually reaches production, what will happen here from a re-render's perspective? Um, parent component re-renders. Every single key in this array changes. All of them uh, are just out. All of them are unmounted and then remounted back. Data is still the same there, but if it's a big list, you probably will be able to even see visual effects of this. All of those components will just completely disappear from the screen and then reappear again. You will have lots of bugs with this approach. You will have um, lost focus. Some state will be reset. So probably should not do this anyway <laughs> any, any, in any app. And the most scary and dangerous thing about this random key is it even um, overrides um, react.memo. Even if we wrap our child component into the uh, react.memo, in normal circumstances, we would expect this component to stay the same if props haven't changed. If the key changes, uh, React will think it's a completely new component, so react.memo will not help here at all. And again, uh, lots of lots of things to know about this key. If you're keen to read about stuff rather than listen, um, here is the article for you. So um, that is more or less it for today. What exactly <laughs> we learned is, is uh, this. So props by themselves do not cause a re-render of a component. The props change only matters when a component is actually wrapped in react.memo. Context uh, is actually not an um, evil demon, but something that in certain, certain circumstances can be good for your performance. And also, key is not something that prevents re-renders, it prevents remounting. For preventing re-renders, we have other tools like react.memo. Uh, those are the links to the articles and to the blog, and I think that's it for me. <laughs>